Medic Mind. Motivate, mentor, maximize. Welcome to the second tutorial on Venn diagrams. Let's start off by looking at Euler diagrams. In these questions, you'll be given a list of items in sets. You'll be asked to choose the correct Venn diagram to represent the group of items. And you have to group the items using your own knowledge and then find the correct Venn. Now you may be wondering, what's the difference between Venn diagrams and Euler diagrams? Well, a Venn diagram shows all possible logical relationships between a series of sets, but a Euler diagram only shows relationships that exist in the real world. Now, syllogisms don't make sense logically, as we've already gone over before. Sentences like apples or pizzas, that doesn't make sense, does it? But Euler diagrams do make sense logically. Apples and pizzas will be in one group, paper and pens will be in another group. Let's have a look at an example now. Which of the following Venn diagrams correctly represents the relationship between cakes, Italian food, plants, trees, forests and glass? Take a moment to pause the video here. OK, I hope you're ready now. The first step we need to do is separate the information presented into groups. We have cakes, Italian food, plants, trees, forests and glass. So the question you have to ask yourself is, how do these um, items relate to each other? Well, we know cakes and Italian food are items that we can eat. Plants, trees and forests are all part of one umbrella group. And glass is separate to all three. These are the three lists you should have come up with. Now, the reason we make these three groups is to help us identify straight away which Venn diagram we can knock out. We see in A there are three groups, in B there are three different areas, in C there are also three different areas, but D only has two areas, meaning we can rule out D for sure. Next, we can count the number of Venn circles there are. We know that there are six items, so we need to make sure that there are six items in each Venn. Unfortunately, C does not have six items, it has seven. Therefore, we can rule out C. Next, we need to compare category by category. The information we talked about before earlier, when we separated it, the information into three groups, comes into hand here. There are three different categories, so we need, to, we need three separate regions. Let's call them X to represent cakes and Italian food, Y to represent plants, trees and forests, and Z to represent glass. In X, we know that, some, that cakes are an example of Italian food, meaning some cakes are Italian food. That means we need to look for one circle overlapping another circle. Straight away we can see that A does not have this for, 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 two, for two circles. Sorry, It does have it for the top right corner where there are three circles, but cakes and Italian food are part of one subset that have only two circles. Therefore the answer is B, but let's check the rest of the information just in case. In area Y, we know that all trees are plants and some trees are forests. The information where it says all trees are plants needs one circle inside another circle and one circle overlapping another circle. These will all be separate to X and Z. Both A and B have this, so it doesn't really help us here. In Z, we have glass in its own category. This means it needs its own separate circle from X and Y. Overall, the answer is B because of what we found out from X, where cakes were part of Italian food. Next, let's look at Venn to text questions. Here, they will give you a circular Venn diagram, possibly with sections missing. They're going to ask you to choose a correct statement based on the Venn diagram. You will have to use the information in the circular Venn diagram to form conclusions. For these questions, it's best to look at the statements given and see which can be ruled out immediately or ones that take the least amount of time to rule out. Process of information is the way forward. So an example, the following diagram displays a number of flowers in the gardens of 100 citizens in Berkshire. Every home has at least one flower. Which of the following statements is true? A. There are more gardens that have tulips and roses. B. There are exactly 21 gardens with only one type of flower. C. The number of gardens with all four flowers cannot be calculated. And D. There are more gardens that have roses than daffodils. First of all, we can see that there are two missing values that are x and y. It's a good idea to note down what these values represent. We can see that x represents the number of gardens with daffodils, tulips, 
roses, but not dandelions. We see that white represents a number of gardens with tulips, roses, but not daffodils, and not dandelions. Looking at these statements, the easiest to rule out is C, because all we have to do is check if there is a region that has four overlapping circles or not. There is no such region, region here, therefore we know that no zero gardens have all four flowers. C is therefore false, because we know that the answer is zero, and it can therefore be calculated. The second easiest to rule out is B. There are exactly 21 gardens with only one type of flower. Now to work this out, we just have to work out the numbers that are not in any overlapping regions. For daffodils, this is 4. For tulips, this is 3. For dandelions, this is 7. And for roses, it's 6. That's 20, meaning B is also false. Statement A is the next easiest statement to solve. There are more gardens that have tulips than roses. Now, if we look at tulips and we look at roses, both have X and both have Y. This we can use to our advantage. If we add up the number of citizens that have roses, we get 26 plus X plus Y. If we do the same for tulips, we get 19 plus X plus Y. Now, the value of X and the value of Y are definitely going to be positive. This is significant because we know that no matter what X and what Y and Y are, Gardens with roses will be way more than gardens with tulips, simply because the 26 is larger than 19. We can therefore rule out A as well, and therefore the answer is D. Let's just check if it is the case. We use the same logic. 4 plus 2 plus 9 plus x is 15 plus x. For roses, it's 26 plus x plus y. Now, y cannot be a negative number, meaning the answer is D. There are more gardens that have roses than daffodils. Now here, for B and C, it was, it, I spotted straight away that those are the ones I could rule out straight away. But between A and D, it wasn't that simple. That's just a matter of guessing and intuition. I could have easily worked out D first and saved time, but I, I, I happened to work out A then D. In the exam, just try and work out the simplest uh, statements like B and C, and then those that are left over, just work through them in a methodical manner till you get to the correct answer. Next, we have non-circular vendor text diagrams. Now here you'll be given a non-circular Venn diagram. Now you may think this may be a lot harder than a standard diagram, but trust me, it's not that much difficult, much more difficult. The same principles apply. You'll be asked to choose a correct statement based on the Venn diagram. You have to use the information in the non-circular Venn to form conclusions. So this is a good example here. How many people have how many more how many people will have a salad with at least sweet potato pie and at least chicken breast? So straight away, what you should be looking at is what shape is being represented by sweet potato pie. I can see that the rhombus is being represented by sweet potato pie. So what you need to do is add up all the numbers within the rhombus. So that's 6 plus 7 plus 5 plus 2. And you need to find the difference between that and chicken breast. Chicken breast is a love heart, which adds up to 7, 5 plus 2. And that should give you 13. This is one of the most basic questions you'll get in the exam. But you shouldn't worry because the non circular Venn diagram questions aren't that different to normal circular Venn diagram questions. So, as long as you understand the principles that we have talked about just now, you'll be completely fine and have no hassle in answering the questions. Let's do a summary now of everything we've learned on Venn diagrams. When you are presented with questions that do not already have a Venn diagram presented to you, draw your own. Do not fall into the trap of just putting the numbers in the Venn diagram without calculating them properly. Now we've gone over these two quite a lot already. Read over the information as many times as you need. Now I understand there's only one minute per section, but if you feel like a question has a lot of information and you don't understand it, flag it and come back to it at the end. And if it is a Euler diagram question, try and think of as many possible real life conditions as possible. It's going to be loads of different objects. Try and think how they link in any sort of way. And that concludes our session on Venn diagram. Thank you for watching this free Medic Mind tutorial. For £30, you can unlock all 150 tutorials in our online course. The course covers four full days of UK CAT teaching, as well as a course to help you with your personal statement and interview. You're free to ask as many questions as you'd like to our teachers, and with each tutorial, you can read along using our five UK CAT ebooks covering 500 pages of theory and questions to guide you every step of the way.